Hey guys, it's Justin here. First off, I want to say thank all of you so much for everything you've done, all your support. We would not keep doing this if it wasn't for you guys making it so fun interacting with us. Uh, second, we had a technical difficulty um, recording Shawn Michaels' Hunter Taker Hell in a Cell. Because of this, we're actually going to have to delay it and upload it on August 17th. Um, but to make up for that, tomorrow, or today, Monday, we're giving you the first episode of Welcome to the Elite, our Patreon-exclusive AEW spinoff podcast, where Spencer and I talk about AEW from uh, starting from Double or Nothing and continuing on to Dynamite up to current uh, episodes, um, where you guys can follow along as I learn about wrestling, which is really cool. And we want to let you guys know that we'll also be posting our trivia challenge on on Patreon on Wednesday, so you actually will still get exclusive content. We want to apologize again for that delay. Please uh, feel free to tweet at us, email us, message us, comment on Patreon, anything, if you have any questions. Thanks again, guys. Welcome to The Elite. As always, I'm Spencer. And I'm Dustin. And welcome to our very first episode of our last match standing AEW crawl. Woo! Dustin, welcome to the pod. And to wrestling, right? And to wrestling, right. <laughs> so, so as you heard, it's Welcome to The Elite. Right, and the reason why we call it "Welcome to the Elite" is because this is is not only a a welcome to AEW for Last Match Standing and and this sort of AEW crawl that we're going to be doing, but this is a welcome to Dustin as is it's his first real um, shot at at watching wrestling on a consistent basis, right? Yeah, and actually analyzing it, and not just go, "Wow, that was cool." Yeah, which this first episode will obviously be. Wow, that was cool the whole time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so the reason why we are doing uh, "Welcome to the Elite" is because we were able to hit um, one of our first goals on our Patreon yep. page. That's right. So thank you so much to all of our patrons that uh, that have been supporting us so far. We we hit one of our our monetary goals, and so because of that, you guys get to reap the benefits, and those benefits are um, are these episodes of "Welcome to the Elite." Um, so kind of the way we're going to do it is we're going to start by one episode at a time going through the the AEW pay-per-views uh, leading up to Dynamite. Uh, so that means today's episode will be from May 25th, 2019 from the MGM Grand Garden Arena from Las Vegas, Nevada for AEW's first ever official event Double or Nothing. Yeah, I love the theming of it and everything. Um, the casino thing. Um, and what was the, the first, even, it's even called the Casino Battle Royale. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, on yeah. The, the buy-in pre-show, yeah. right? I, <laughs> I, as a kid, I loved casino-themed stuff, and then when I grew up, I realized I didn't have money to be in those, but uh, the idea was, <laughs> is, is still fun, right? Yeah. So I love the theme. You're absolutely right. The Battle Royale is really, really good, and, and we'll get to the buy-in here in a second. Um, but this is where we're going to start. We're going to start with Double or Nothing. That means next episode here on Welcome uh, to the Elite will be Fighter Fest, and we'll kind of go that way. Um, but for our patrons that are listening, this is going to be an opportunity for you to kind of help shape the show for us as well. Um, Dustin and I and, and Landon and Paul, for that matter, have also been talking about what you guys might want to hear uh, in terms of Welcome to the Elite. Um, as of right now, we haven't decided if we want to rank maybe AEW pay-per-views or rank matches or maybe just recommend matches that might make our main last match standing feed. Um, so it's up to you guys, our patrons, to let us know what you think, what you want. Um, I think what's going to be really, really fun about this is having Dustin's introduction to, you know, week to week and, and event to event wrestling. Um, and and it, it's going to be awesome, awesome, awesome hearing his feedback. And for me, uh, I purposely haven't watched AEW because of this. And I think that's important to note too, is that I haven't watched any Dynamite 
tonight. I have I've barely watched any of the pay-per-view events, and that was in preparation for doing this AEW crawl because I wanted my reactions to be as fresh as Dustin's. It was written in stone. And here we are. Here we are. Here we are. So on commentary tonight for the main show uh, is Jim Ross, Excalibur, and Alex Marvez. Um, JR actually does not work on the pre-show. He joins the main show later on. Uh, but we have to get started with the buy-in. Actually, let me say, I know who JR is. You do know what? who JR is. How could is. you not? Yeah. My God. <laughs> <laughs> the legend himself, right? Um, and it's been interesting since JR left the WWE. He's done some different things. You know, we obviously have talked about him on the main pod um, covering some New Japan stuff. And he sort of sounds out of his element in those moments. But I, I think from what I gather, he's he's found his way in, in AEW just fine. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I don't want to maybe say this, but it feels like just watching a normal episode of like, you know, Raw or SmackDown with them, just JR really makes the uh, matches way more than they you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think uh, for this being the first big event that the three of these guys work together, um, there's some awkward, you know, sort of silent moments. But for the most part, they're really pretty good together. Yeah, I thought so, too. Yeah. I noticed they caught each other sometimes. They were just staring at each other like, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which and, is going to happen here. Which yeah. it, it's Exactly. It's going to be me <laughs> and you. <laughs> uh, but I, you know who I love is Excalibur. Yeah. I think he's fantastic. I've never really heard of him before. Uh, Carolyn actually watched it with me, and she's like, why is he wearing a mask? Does he not take it off when he just do a commentary? No, no. He you don't understand. Yeah, you know what I loved about it? Because uh, Excalibur was on when we did the uh, Young Bucks and World's Cutest Tag Team on the main pod. He was one of the commentators for that match. And uh, he's just one of the guys that, um, and and he just really talks about the holds and the moves. And, and we love that a lot because so often, especially if you want you know, you know, to talk about feeling like an episode of Raw or SmackDown, um, when Michael Cole and other guys are, are calling commentary for them, um, you don't get a whole lot of moves called, and so it's well, nice. Are those to guys see uh, pre- like ex wrestlers? Uh, no, Cole? and I mean, that's part yeah. of the problem, okay, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's like the whole engineers problem, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly right. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to the buy-in pre-show. I mean, this event from Las Vegas was huge, hugely anticipated. It was coming out after the all in pay-per-view um, that was not technically AW, which is why we did not start there. Um, but this show sold out so, so quickly, and uh, they did not hold any punches on this pre-show at all. Yeah, um, it feels very self-aware. Um, I don't remember exactly where along the show it happens, but I remember that uh, Cody Rhodes smashes basically Triple H's like, throne, right? Yeah. And it's just like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, and we we'll, we will get there. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, we yeah. will get there. But uh, the whole time, it's it. I mean, it feels like they they have subtle comparisons. Even on commentary, they'll say certain things where it's yeah. like a little stab. It's like, ooh, geez. Yeah, and you know, depending on what side of the fence you're on, that's either a good thing or not necessary. Yeah. So, and that's an yeah. interesting thing. I, I don't think they overdo it here. Obviously, the Cody bit. Maybe I mean that was very blatant. But if you're gonna come out and make a statement in your first big show, yeah. go for it. Like I think it. I, Part of me, I, I kind of was uncomfortable there a little bit. It was like, whoa, that was like super in your face. But I also kind of um, reconciled it in my head is more of that's like his character than it is a representation. Yeah. Of, you know what I mean? And, and the crowd loved it. You yeah. know what I mean? And people yeah. obviously on Twitter loved it at the time. So I, you Hopefully know. Hopefully their whole um, their whole thing doesn't just become we're better than WWE, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I think part of what you and I will have a lot of fun doing as we re- do this AEW crawl um, is is try to do that, you know, try to see exactly where they stand on comparing themselves or, you know, where things stand in WWE at the time that these events are going on. So I think that's really interesting. Right. Uh, but the buy-in pre-show opens with the Casino Battle Royale, right? It's it's a 16-minute, 22-man, 21-man Battle Royal, right? Yeah, I think it ends up becoming 22. Yeah. There's like a, there's a surprise and there's like a, another surprise. I don't of, of course, why not? <laughs> um, the rules are a little convoluted. <laughs> like, yeah. It's it's just it's a little I mean I I understand they to make it fit the theme of Yes, the, yeah. I understand being very gimmicky, but the idea was basically um, that that the wrestlers drew cards prior to the match and uh, based on which suit they were uh, is based on when they would come out in the match. Um, you, you know, whatever. <laughs> it yeah. uh, all intents and purposes it's a battle royal, right? right? And so we start in the royale. ring. Royale. Battle royale. Apologies. Battle <laughs> royale. That's right. <laughs> uh, we, we start with uh, Dustin Thomas, Sunny Days, Brandon Cutler, uh, Michael Nakazawa, and MJF. And if that's not like the most diverse, like how many people was that? Five, six people? Yeah. Ever? yeah. I've never seen someone. 
gosh, I don't know the actual term if you're missing both your legs, but what is that, quadriplegic? Yeah. Yes, come out in a wrestling ring. He actually, he wasn't just there to be like a joke to build heat for people. No. You know? I mean, you know, MJF might have done it, but for the, he actually took one or two guys out the ring. Not it to was, jump ahead, but yeah. No. I, that was nice to see is what I'm saying. And then Sunny Days, obviously, you know, everything was, yeah. I, I think you're absolutely right, which yeah. is so interesting. And, and you know, we're going to talk about MGF a lot. I feel like over the course of this show, oh, yeah. not just this show, but as we move on yeah. down our AW crawl, Pretty hard to forget. Yeah, <laughs> um, but he is obviously a, a major, major heel, and he's really, really good. And and we'll talk about why. But one of the first things that happens on this whole night is MJF looks at Dustin Thomas and and says uh, he, that he's Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> That's wrong, Lieutenant Dan! Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh. I, I paused and explained to Carolyn, I was like, so there's a thing in wrestling called building heat, <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> they do it in really cheap ways like this. Uh, yeah, but, you know, if you, especially if you're not, if, if you're watching it just from, like, a casual perspective, yeah. you want to hate that guy, yeah, right? Yeah, How no. mean is that? Yeah. No, the building heat thing is one of the things I picked up from listening to you guys. So yeah, oh, well, that's the you, extent yeah, of my look experience. At, look how smart! <laughs> what, a, what a smart guy you are over there. Um, but yeah, so the the match basically gets going. Um, you know, we have the clubs, and then the diamonds enter the fray. Um, the the cool thing about the the diamonds group is is it's really cool in the second the second group that comes in. It's Brian Pillman Jr., uh, Isaiah Cassidy, Joey Janela, Jimmy Havoc, and Sean Spears. Sean Spears, of course, being uh, new to AEW at that point, having just come over from being Ty Dillinger in the WWE. I did not know that. Yeah. Also, there were some people there that obviously that uh, were there. Was there anybody in this group that's a, a longtime wrestling veteran? I know throughout the whole battle royale, they have people who have been wrestling since like the eighties, right? Is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is not the. Uh, there's no veterans necessarily, like twenty year veterans. That's yeah, gonna yeah. be in our next group. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Jimmy Havoc. Though, Jimmy I Havoc. I would like to say I didn't know what to think about him at first. You know, he uh, looks like he comes from a hardcore background. I don't know, but he he was um, he the stapler, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. That's it's over the top and crazy, but at, at towards the end, I was like, I actually kind of like this guy. You know? Yeah, you <laughs> know, it's funny. He comes out during the uh, the belt presentation in yeah. the main show, and Jr. says he looks like a walking hardcore death match. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't catch that. Of course, yeah. you would write that down. No, well, yeah, he does. Is, yeah, which is totally spot on. Yeah. Um, but but Joey Janela is also a really interesting character. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Pillman Jr. Uh, do you do you know I anything know about name. Brian Pillman? Yeah. So obviously, so his his dad, Brian Pillman, was uh, was a big wrestler in uh, WWF and, and WCW in the 90s. Um, a bit of a tragic story there. Is it Flying Brian? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Um, that, yeah. A bit of a tragic story there. We won't have to go into that, but really love Brian Pillman Jr. Yeah. So really cool seeing him. Um, the Hearts come out next, and this is where we get a couple veterans, including yeah. Billy Gunn. I've, I've, no, I've heard that name. I think Paul loves Billy Gunn. Is that, I, think, I think he's brought him up multiple times. He does like right. Billy Gunn. Yes, You're yes, absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Billy Gunn is, you know, a legend and fun. But you know who else is in there that in this in this group of hearts that uh, that is sort of random and a, and a veteran is Glacier. Okay, that's I want to say it was like Blizzard Glacier. That's right. Um, he has that gimmick where he like spits in people's face. Yes, and they that feels so like. 70s, 80s. I you know? love. And I, I, I wanted to hate it, but I was like, that was cool. <laughs> there's there's something I love. You know, Asuka does it now. Uh, and she spits green mist. It comes off of like Tajiri, who used to spit green, green mist. And, and prior to that, um, you know, we had, we, we covered um, the great Muda and uh, Juice and Thunder Liger on, on the main pot. And there's mist all here, over there. The absolutely. I didn't he realize wasn't. how big of a deal he was. A Liger, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Huge deal. Total, yeah. total legend. Um, so really, really fun seeing Glacier spit out his ice or, what, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, but who else is in this Hearts group is Jungle Boy, who yeah. uh, I found out later, I didn't realize, is the son of Luke Perry, the actor. Wow. You know, when you say Luke Perry, my brain goes to country singer. Am I making that, <laughs> that up? No, that's... Um, Luke Bryan? Luke Bryan. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I'll probably see a picture of Luke Perry and be like, wow, I'm an idiot. I, I know oh, that Luke person. Perry, big 80s heartthrob, right? A lot of women loved Luke Perry. Um, he actually just passed away pretty recently, which is, which is tough. Oh, man, but, I didn't know that. Yeah, but Jungle Boy uh, really liked him mm-hmm. just yeah. off the bat. I don't know yeah. what it was about him. Really enjoyed him. Um, I actually did... Um, when, I, when I first watched this, I did a little Googling, seeing who people were. Um, I think it's Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, mm-hmm. and um, oh my gosh, what's I I don't remember all their names. Who's the one? I, this really short guy. 
Oh, uh, Marco Stunt. Yes, Marco Stunt. All three of them, I believe, are on a team together. I think it's called like the Jungle Express or something. Like that. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're I right. That was awesome. Uh, really, really fun, and they kind of yeah. go together, yeah, right? No, they the do. way they totally look, like they go together. Um, when the spades come in, you've got Sunny Kiss. Yes. Uh, who I love, a Luchasaurus, um, you know, in that group as well, and then Tommy Dreamer, oh, Sunny Kiss. You said Sunny Days earlier, oh, but they're both in there. Yeah, there was Yo, a I Sunny know, Days know, and a Sunny Kiss. But I was kiss. thinking, um, I had their faces mixed up in my. Yeah, head. I mean, their names are really similar. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. Totally good. But if you put them side by side, totally different. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely different wrestlers. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, Tommy Dreamer comes out in this uh, that's Spades group. Tommy yeah. Dreamer, legend, right? Never even heard of him before this, but. They the way they talk to him, it's obvious he's a big yeah, deal. He, yeah, when when people think of ECW, um, you know the big hardcore promotion oh, in the nineties, he he's kind of the face that you think of. There's a couple others, but he's one of the main faces that yeah. you think of, which is why he comes to the ring with weapons. I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. was he taking the ring with him? Um, he took uh, a, a trash can full oh, yes, of yes, different weapons, yes, right? And that yeah. that's before he gets. Um, you know, he gets staple gunned in, in the head and then yeah. in the junk later yeah. by, oh, <laughs> by yeah. Jimmy Havoc. Uh, but then after all the all the uh, suits are in the ring, we also have the Joker card. Mm-hmm. And that Joker card is Hangman Adam Page. Yes. That's right. I remember uh, when I first started watching this, Landon was like, you got to pay extra close attention because uh, there's a guy who gets introduced and he's going to be a really big deal in the future. And as soon as I saw him, I was like, it's just got to be Adam Page. You know, yep. he's probably like the guy. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, he and he looks the part. Yeah. No, he was he? great. You know, I mean, I, I haven't watched enough, obviously, to be like, oh, God, they're shoving him down my throat. But I enjoyed watching him. And I actually wrote down, I was like, Adam Page is like a younger, sexier Steve Austin. I love he, that. He had the vest, but and he even had like the walk, you know, when yeah. he was like walking down the ring. It's like, damn, this dude's got bad knees, but he could beat my ass, you know? <laughs> I love that a lot. I love yeah. that a whole. That's a really, really good comparison. Yeah. <laughs> um, Joey Janela. There's a, just a couple of moments here as we wind down the battle royal, uh, battle royale. Apologies. <laughs> uh, Joey Janela gets choke slammed out of the ring yeah. by the Luchasaurus. Yeah, and uh, when he smashes into that table, unfortunately, I didn't catch the name of the woman. I think it was like his girlfriend or his, you know, who escorted to the ring. But she screamed. I had goosebumps, and they did a replay in both times. I was like, oh god. Well, it, it doesn't help that it looks like he dies. Yeah, he gets, right, he almost my lands god, on his he got head. Broken in half. <laughs> Right, it was horrible. It was horrible. Uh, you know who else makes an appearance in this battle royale is Orange Cassidy. Oh my God, Carolyn was watching it with me, and she said he's my favorite now. What's his name? I love him because when he puts his hand in his pocket, he does those little kicks. I think, and I'm I'm pretty sure because I haven't lived under a rock. Orange Cassidy becomes a pretty big deal later down the line. Oh really? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I thought he was like a just a okay, cool. Yeah, so you know, it's one of those gimmicks that that starts as sort of the comedy thing, and it's kind of funny. But I think it, he really takes off closer to to now. Wow. Um, so that's gonna be really fun to watch the yeah, rise of no, Orange Cassidy absolutely. as we go. Uh, but towards the end of the match, Adam Page eliminates a Luchasaurus, and he thinks he's won. But MJF was off to the side um, yep. and out of the ring, and he tries to come in and steal it. But eventually, Adam Page is your winner. It was like, a, well, I don't know what you call it, like a double controversy almost, because yeah. he Adam Page thought he won. MJF thought Adam Page was out, but uh, Adam Page never touched the ground. So the, I, I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, God, fuck. Cause I wanted, I, I'm not going to lie. I wanted Adam to win, you know? Yeah. He, obviously, I guess they, they, they made him work. And uh, the way they did it, was, I think it was pretty cool. How fun. I, I just love battle, battle royals in general. Um, but that was a really good ending. Yeah. It was a really good ending. Yeah, normally, um, I think I might have watched one or two battle royales over the years being friends with Landon. Yeah. And uh, just a lot of people in the ring at once was kind of boring, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it's a lot of punching in the corner yeah, and, yeah, and stuff like that. It. I get that. So yeah. that's that's where you, where you have the higher spots, you know, the mm. – and, and maybe maybe to your point, maybe that's why it's on the, the pre-show instead of the main card. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I, well, I, like I said, I enjoy this one. And it's probably because I was introduced to new characters, whereas before it's like, I've heard of these guys. Yeah. You know, but this is, uh, I did actually, I want to write, there's one point where MJF kneels down in front of Dustin Thomas and yep. he says something like, what's wrong, Lieutenant Dan? Oh I wrote, gosh. fuck MJF. Yeah. In parentheses, <laughs> because Dustin Thomas. Right. So <laughs> I was like, yo, that's my name and that's messed up, bro. Yeah, I, we don't like that at all. No. He's, oh man, he's horrible. Uh, but, but he's great too. He's a, he's, for me, he's a heel that I love to hate. Yeah, you know. which which is what makes him such a good yep. character. Yeah, um, the important part about Adam Page winning the the Casino Battle Royale is that he will get a title shot for the first ever AEW World Champion. Yeah, yep. 
And so that's super, super important. So that's kind of neat that before the double or nothing even starts, we sort of have the ha- we have half of that puzzle figured out. Right. And we'll learn the second half, um, obviously, in the main event, and we'll get there later. Uh, but there is one more match on the uh, the buy-in pre-show, and that is Sammy Guevara versus Kip Sabian in yep. a singles action. What do you think about this one? Um, I think it was pretty great. These are two people. Um, the thing about AEW is I've know- I know some of these names. Obviously, people have different names and different... Uh, different promotions. These are two guys I've never heard of before. They got in the match and I was impressed and I love some of the names of their moves. Yes. Um, I don't know if you have a, a uh, you know, move by move breakdown, but I would like to say the Harry Potter themed moves of uh, Kip Sabian, the Cruciatus Clutch and uh, the Deathly Hollows. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Yes. Those are awesome. Love that. Yeah, and then um, Sammy Guevara just looks like such a douche. And, but it was, it was like, I, I liked it. You know, he was like, I hate this guy. I want to see him get his ass beat. But he was a great wrestler, too. So. Yeah. Oh, he and, be- um, go, go ahead. No, uh, you go ahead. Um, I did want to say, did you notice there was a weird cut in there? Yeah. What, what, what do you think happened? I don't know. I don't know. It was, and, and it's one of those things that I kind of, and, and I think I'm probably going to be willing to give them benefit of the doubt because I've been watching uh, for Last Mania. We've been watching the first, you know, we've done 12 WrestleManias at this point, uh, and the production is not great for some of them. So it was almost, I saw the cut and just thought, meh. <laughs> you know, yeah, like meh. it's just one of the things that happens. No, I know. Yeah, you're right. And it might have been a bad angle they got. Mm-hmm. Or I don't know. But I would like to say, you brought up Juice and Thunder Liger. They talked. They, uh, one of them did a shooting star press. Is that his signature move that he created? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, th- yeah. I think he did the they shooting star that. press um, off the barricade. Yes, that was wild. Yes, <laughs> that was Guevara. That was wild. Yeah, you know what I was just thinking, and and I feel like um, the t- I, th- I feel like with the two of us on this on this pod that we this this will make the most sense coming from us, I guess. But um, when this match started, I just thought, man. Those are pretty people. Yeah, no. Yeah. In the ring. Oh, my God. You, you chose us. That's funny how you said that. No, I agree. Um, especially Sammy Guevara. Yeah, they're just that pretty perfect people. Hair. So they're fun to watch. Yeah. You know, I, it, I just I hate you, it. you, sexy son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kip Sabian ultimately does get the win over Guevara via pinfall. Uh, and that's sort of how um, the second match of, of the night, I think it was after Deathly Hallows. I think he yeah, wins I off believe of it was. Death, yep. Deathly Hallows, last notes I had Deathly which Hallows. is really neat. Hallows. Is it Hallows? The Deathly book Hallows? is Hallows. I think he called the move Hallows. I'm not positive, but it's obvious. Come on. It, it's a reference. Harry Potter fan. Yeah, yeah. I totally get it. Um, as the buy-in goes off the air, uh, the elite comes out, right? You've got Cody and Brandy, and you've got um, you know Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. They come out and they they make a joke about um, setting the all-time attendance record in the MGM, which is you know uh, a bit of a shot. Okay. Just wow. Did you get it? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Uh, WWE, you know, obviously and and notoriously inflates their attendance numbers. Sold out. Uh, what, what are they? Uh, Capacity crowd, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's capacity it. <laughs> crowd. Uh, but one thing I thought was really, really neat is that Brandy said that uh, it was a sensory inclusive event. Yeah, I thought that was really cool too. That one yeah. thing that I noticed from the get go, AW seems to try to they're trying to make a point of being inclusive. That's why you brought up Sunny Days, and I, in my head it was it's actually Sunny Kiss. Right. But that's what that's why I, I said that is because obviously you don't really see characters like that in WWE. At least I haven't. Right. You know, you've watched way more than I have, but it feels pretty special. I, I get to your I yeah. get your point absolutely. So that's it's really really cool. And, yeah. And I think part of what AW has done to your point is you know wrestling is for everyone. That's kind of in the the trend. Yeah. And um and it's and it's important and cool to see different types of people right. um, in the ring. So that's really, really neat. Uh, but the buy-in is over. Let's get to the actual show, Double or Nothing, and it starts with the National Anthem. Did you catch who the National Anthem was by? Who was it? Uh, Chris Jackson uh, with his wife and daughter. Chris Jackson played George Washington in Hamilton. You know what? I actually just got a Disney Plus subscription from my parents there you so go. I could watch that specifically. I haven't done it yet because I only got it like Sunday Dustin, or Saturday. But it will change your life. Okay, well, now we need to start a Hamilton podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> a, a song-by-song breakdown. Yeah, that, that's what everyone wants to listen to, I think, right? <laughs> um, Last song standing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but Chris Jackson, they did a great job with the National Anthem. It was cool for me just to see them. But the opening match of the main card is a six-man tag match. Uh, we have SoCal Uncensored versus the Stronghearts. I was going to say it because I remembered their names. Do, well, um, well, who are they? Well, who's on the teams? Do you, do you uh, remember who was on the teams? I remember the names of the tag. Oh, did I set one you up? One guy, though, I wrote down because I recognize his name. Yeah. Apparently, he's a really big deal. Yeah. Christopher Daniels. Yes. I've heard you guys mention him a lot. I just wrote, Christopher Daniels is a big deal, right? 
Yeah, yeah and he has, yeah. yeah, he is. Yeah. He's on. He's, he's on he's our, been our while, main huh? pod. Yeah, he was yeah. in a triple threat match that that made the uh, the main pod. Uh, but he's on the team with SoCal Uncensored with Scorpio Sky, who I totally fell in love with. Oh, he's yeah, and I, I incredible. Name, yeah. and, and Frankie yeah, Kazara Kazarian. Kazarian. Yeah, you're at spot. I mean, you're yeah, right I'm there. trying. You're yeah. right there. Uh, and they were placing. Uh, they were facing Strong Hearts with T Hawk. Uh, Linda Man and Asima. Yeah. So I actually remember T Hawk and Linda Man. Yeah. Linda Man. There you I go. I didn't remember the other one. Ugh. That's what I need to do. I wrote down the. That's one thing I need to learn. Remember names. Yeah. Because I mean, SCU isn't enough. <laughs> as as we're getting introduced to all these new superstars, all these new wrestlers, um, I need to make a list. That's just kind of what I. <laughs> that's yeah. what I've been doing. Uh, but as a six man tag match, how do you think this one started the show? Um, I think it was pretty great, actually. Um, I'm probably gonna say that about everything. You know, I'm so on the fence. This was terrible. No, uh, <laughs> SCU, one thing I wrote down was, um, I felt like S- they probably both did, but I noticed that SCU worked really well together. Um, I wrote down sl- three-man moves. Yeah. Um, yeah, when they had this three-man, I guess you call them like finishers or, mm-hmm. you know, those guys, everything they did looked amazing. I did want to ask a question. Um, is that what a hot tag is when you're in a tag team match and technically you're not supposed to be in the ring, but you're doing things? So, so a hot tag is typically when... Um, and normally it happens for the for the face team, right? And mm-hmm. and so basically the good guy's getting beaten up, and he's just been getting beaten up by a lot, and he finally hits one good move on the heel, whether it's an enziguri or a big clothesline or whatever, and he crawls to the corner, and he finally gets that tag that he's been trying to get mm. for the last five minutes, right? And that guy comes in really fast, and he hits all okay. these moves into session really quick. Tag. That's okay. a hot tag. So I guess they don't really have a name for when you have three people in the ring at once, and you're only supposed to have but one. <laughs> it, you know, against the rules, technically. Other than, other than like, typical. You know, right. Okay. Uh, but the rules don't matter. Nah, they don't. And the, actually, I'll get The to rules it. don't exist, and the points don't matter. Right. How's it go? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Everything's made up, and the points yeah. don't matter. <laughs> Uh, which in AEW they will. Yeah, the wins and Spoiler losses alert. matter, which is which is super important I and think I think it's really neat. Mm-hmm. Um but there is something very interesting about having a six man tag open the show as opposed to just your regular uh four man tag team match, uh, because you are able to do a lot of those trio moves, which are really, really fun. Uh and it's just it's just a match. It goes a little over thirteen minutes and it's and it's back and forth, but it's a good time. Yeah. It's a good time. I was super impressed with uh, Scorpio Sky. Um, it was my first time seeing him, and, and Strong Hearts were really fun together. Um, but ultimately, uh, SoCal Uncensored do hit uh, their finisher, the best Meltzer ever. Wow. Yeah. I actually did write one thing. Justin Roberts, is he the announcer? He is. They wrote, wrote at one point, Justin Roberts, his tux is only a rental. Oh, I have the same thing. <laughs> and if pay. you give blood on it, he has to pay. Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, I thought that was really yeah, funny. Yeah, and uh, I d- I, you kind of... I didn't catch you in time. I did want to say, um, I don't know if you caught the double drop kick that the strong hearts did. Yes. I can't re- yeah. That was brutal. Um, I don't remember who was on the, do you remember who it was? That's uh, what I'm, who, I got. Who? We'll get better next time, folks. <laughs> um, but they kick the crap out of the guy. I think it's like from both sides. They just like yeah. squish his poor head. And then also, um, can you explain how a Northern Lights suplex works? Because I've definitely heard that name before, and I'm pretty sure they somebody pulls off this move in the match. Yeah, yeah. Northern Lights suplex is one. Of, it's one of my favorite moves, mm-hmm. right? So basically, the idea is um, it's similar to a regular suplex, except uh, which a regular suplex is that? Is that belly to belly, or is that so? Yeah. So a regular suplex is um, you know like if if I was if I was performing a suplex on you, right? Like your head would go underneath my my arm, and then your uh, your your arm that's closest to me will go over my head and then I'll flip you over my back, wow. right? So a Northern Lights is similar, except um, almost you would do the position, you would do the suplex from the position you're in. And so you, while being under my arm, would flip me over backwards and you would probably bridge. They Normally Northern, normally Northern Lights like have a crab bridge. thing? Yeah. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, yes. One of my favorite moves. Wow. What, you know, wow, and actually, my stomach's cramping up just yeah. thinking about doing that. <laughs> I feel like I would probably like crap my pants and like, oh! <laughs> Uh, I think what, sorry, I think what, no. What I think one of my favorite <laughs> parts about this uh, AW crawl is going to be, you know, figuring these new things out with yeah. you along the way. I think that's yeah. really fun. No, like, even the simple moves. Like I think I know what a snapmare is, yeah. which is like the but like the basics of the basics. I just like I, I don't know what they're called. Well, you're going to learn yeah. along the way, which so. is fun. Uh, do you know? Do you have any idea why they call their finisher the best Meltzer ever? So let, am I, if I. No, I don't, but let me think. Is Meltzer the guy y'all always talk about? He's the one who like ranks matches and nobody likes him or gives a, you know what I mean? So what yeah, opinion? so he's yeah. the one that does the star system. Yes, right? yes, that, yes. You yeah, know, yeah. rate things five stars. Hey, I got a or, five star from Meltzer, yeah. Right. Okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so it's 
uh, it's now his he's had a move named after him basically and uh best melter ever is is a is the SCU spinoff of it um but ultimately Dave Melter is some people like his opinion. Some people could some people, could not I, care less. It feels less. like some people think it's like gold. Like that's like yeah, oh, like well, he's the, it's Meltzer the word said. of God in yeah. wrestling, right? Yeah. And I couldn't disagree more. But um, it's kind of funny to see that being a, a name for yeah. a finisher. Uh, but SEU gets the win. Uh, they're a super super likable team. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, I think I mean obviously the strong hearts were great, but SEU came out on top and uh, they were fun to watch. I definitely look forward to seeing more for them. And where are we going next? Since we, next, we are going to the women's triple yes. threat, which was not actually a triple threat. So it's actually Kylie Ray versus Nyla Rose and Dr. Britt Baker. Yes. And um, I actually was compelled enough to write down each one of these women <laughs> and their names. Oh, fantastic. And comparisons. Do you mind if I do that real please, quick? No, please okay, do. Okay. So Kylie was pretty short, but Kylie Bailey? Yes. I, absolutely. I, <laughs> I drew the same comparison. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then I wrote either way. She's still sweet and adorable yeah, to watch. Yeah, love it. Um, Nyla Rose. I love the whole, I, I wrote beast mode. Yeah. Because when she comes out, I was like, oh my God, the American kaiju. Do you know what kaiju is? Tell me about it. Kaiju. So, I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, but kaiju, I believe, would refer to monsters like Godzilla, Mothra, all those giant monsters. Oh, that's, that's really kaiju. neat. And that's why they call her that, you know? That's really good. Yeah. Um, and speaking of representation, yeah. Nyla Rose, you know, they don't make a point to mention it, which is also good. Which itself. is great. You don't want to be like a savior. Like a right, yeah, okay. right. Dr. Brett Baker, DMD. She could break your teeth and then give you a referral for some good <laughs> dental care. <laughs> that was awesome. Isn't that the best? That's so cheesy. I, and and this is, you know what I love about Dr. Brett Baker is that she is actually, she's Adam Cole's wife from NXT. Okay. The NXT champion Adam Cole, yeah, okay. um, or former NXT champion. I at have this to point. look him up. Um, but what I love about Britt Baker is that I don't think about him, and and I think that's really important because I think yeah, she's she's, gr- not she's great Adam on her Cole's own. Adam Cole's wife, right? And I think that's great. She's yeah. super great on her own. Um, Allie uh, is on commentary uh, through the match, which is kind of fun to have. But um, Brandy Rhodes. So I put a question mark by her because I didn't know much about her. I um, still don't know much about yeah. her, but I think she. I mean, I think she's around to stay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Does she wrestle in this pay per view? She all? does not. She okay, just I says commentary. I didn't think so. So I don't know if she's gonna be like, you know, if Stephanie McMahon is she gonna be that? Because that's almost the position they're in, right? Cody Rhodes and Brandy Rhodes, yeah. right? Brandy yeah. Brandy is almost in that position. She, I think, I'm thinking like Triple H and exactly. You know, so it H. sounds like Allie is actually gonna face Brandy Rhodes um, at either Fighter Fest or Fight for the Fallen. So that that's what we have we know moving forward yeah. but brandy Rhodes comes out and it almost looks like she's going to join this triple threat match yeah but then oh that this is what you meant yes, yes. but then she says i don't want a match that's great i want a match that is awesome and then oh yes my God. i think maybe the loudest crowd moment of the night so far yeah um i awesome kong awesome but, kong. sorry that was anticlimactic have you seen the show glow uh no but isn't she on it I think so. Yes, I'm. I'm like. I think that's Awesome Kong, and that's she doesn't play Awesome Kong, right? But that's where I actually knew her from. wasn't from actual wrestling. It was from the show Glow, which I highly recommend watching. Yeah, I hear it's great. I don't know but why. Yeah, I haven't gotten and to uh, it. she's on it. So I love that. I love that. I'm, I might be wrong. We're no, I, th- no I, think I think you're right. Yeah, I yeah. think I've heard that. I, like, think like, I, I think was, I was right. talking about people who were on it, and I feel like Landon was like, are you serious? She's on there? <laughs> you know, freaked out about it. But, but the way he freaked out about it is the same way this crowd reacted yeah. in Las Vegas. They huge deal. I can only imagine what it was probably like. To, I mean, there was no there was no teasing that, right? Right. Wasn't they, it just no like, one boom? Knew. And I, I think that happened multiple times. Which is really cool. It's it, like, yeah. It's, you guys can't start off that strong. How are you going to like... Well, maintain that. And it's harder and harder to keep secrets now, right, in the social media age that we live in. So the fact that no one really knew coming into it that uh, that Awesome yeah. Kong would be there really <laughs> I want cool. it to be Awesome Undertaker comes out. Right. It was like <laughs> something chirp, random. Chirp, chirp, chirp. <laughs> uh, but uh, because uh, Awesome Kong joins the triple threat, it's almost like Nyla Rose it, it has sort of her, her opponent. Right, and so it almost to me this turns into almost two singles matches. Yeah, Kong yes. and Nyla Rose versus uh, Ray. I and think it's Brit cool Baker. how they, yeah, those uh, parallel storylines or you know matches. I think that's really nice. Yeah. So, what do you think of the Fatal Four Way overall? Um, well, I would like to say I believe I took more notes about the women's matches in general than I did the men's. I don't know what it was. I th- I think I don't know if they were here better or anything. I think I was just for some reason more I- interested in. It. I don't know. I would say um, I'm having to learn moves still. I think there's one called a Samoan Drop. Yep, Nyla yeah, Rose hits that one. That was intense. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I should have written down names because I'm just like, yeah, this person did some move to an, another person. <laughs> um, oh, my God. And I don't know the timeline, but there's a part where everybody but Awesome Kong is on the ropes. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Well, it's, it was one of those tower moves, right? So yeah. so Kylie Ray They're and... They really played her off as a beast. Loved it. Loved it. Uh, uh, Kylie Ray and Britt Baker have Nyla Rose on the top rope. They go for a superplex, um, but Awesome Kong comes in and power bombs Ray. What an opportunist! And yeah, and Britt Baker. It's just one of those. It's a spot that we kind of see in Fatal Four Ways, uh, but it does it never gets old. It's yeah, really I've fun. never seen that exactly. personally, and I was like, oh my god, super super neat. It was one of those like I don't know if you know what pop off means, but I kind of stood up. I was like, oh, that's so good. You yeah, know? like when you see Goku go Super Saiyan for the first time, a little kid, a little tear comes down. <laughs> If you could make as many Dragon Ball Z references as possible, cool. I think that would so be that yeah, would be good. I should have worn my Dragon Ball Z shirt. The seat, perfect. Um, but it's a match where um, after after that tower, we have uh, sort of Awesome Kong gets eliminated. She gets a, a bit of double super kick action from Ray and Baker, and then Nyla Rose spears her into the steps. Yeah, I wrote that down. I just wrote Nyla spears Kong in the steps. Dope. Yeah, yeah. and it was. Yeah, it, it was. It was dope. It it eliminated her from the match. It was really really cool though. You just said dope. Spin I did. Yeah. Does that not is that not on no, par for me? No, it's cool. <laughs> I just I, it's not on. No, it's not on par for you. I did write. Um, God, I took these notes. I should have been more consci- conscientious of uh, what future Dustin would have to do to decipher them. <laughs> Swinging neck breaker plus yes. a leg hook. Yes. Who was that? What was that? So that I remember w- like oh my god that was cool and we wh- have to talk about. Was that it. the was that the finish? Oh no, that, no, that was earlier. That was Britt uh, yeah, Baker was on Kylie Ray. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Super I, nice I don't neck think I've breaker. I've heard of or seen a swinging neck breaker before. Love that. I did notice. Um, let's see, how did she do it? Weren't they facing each other? And then she she wrapped her leg around her. I guess that's not how the move normally goes. Yeah, I don't but know. man, anyway. it was pretty, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, and, and it was then, fast, quick as a hiccup. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> um, and then I wrote at one point Kylie deadlifts Britt Baker into a German suplex. Yes, I that mean the strength. Awesome. Yeah, the yeah. strength. Super, Surprising super neat. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, beautiful German suplex. And then um, there was a, I, th- I think it was, I think Britt did. It just, I, I wrote her name. God damn it, does she did a neck breaker to someone? It almost looked kind of botched. Do you know what I'm talking about? There was one neck breaker that came along that really stood out. I thought she hurt someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah, I remember that it, sort of in the second half of the match, but it, it actually is interesting that that happened because of the way the match finishes. Yeah. So uh, Britt Baker hits um, after it. So Nyla and, and Kong are out of the ring. They're kind of out of things for a while. And Baker super kicks Kylie Ray. And when she super kicks Kylie Ray, it's like Ray's bow had hung onto her hair just till that last moment yeah. until she gets that last super kick and the bow comes flying <laughs> off. Did they plan that? I don't, I don't know how you could, but it was really perfect. It was great. And and then she picks Ray up for an Ushi Goroshi, uh, which is the... Never heard of it. Right, but it's basically the uh, the what looks like it's going to be a suplex, but then you drop their neck across your knee. Wow. Yeah. It, yeah. I think, didn't they call it something? Like I thought he said it was like, he didn't call it that. I thought he called it like she, a, I, she might have a name for it. Yeah. No, uh, I thought he just called it like a, a neck breaker or a brain buster yeah. or something over the knee. I don't remember what it was, but yeah. Right. I, to, I don't even know how to spell that or else I would write it down. I did Google it as a matter of fact, cool. how to spell it. So <laughs> I'll give it to you later. For your notes that no one else is going to see. Yeah. Just for me. A man after um, my own heart. <laughs> but Gotta Brit, spell it right. Britt Baker wins this fatal four way match. Is that a surprise? Do you think? Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No. I think actually, um, when they all came out, obviously being a new wrestler, I don't know what to judge on based on people's history. But Britt Baker seemed one of the strongest coming out. Actually, you know, Kylie was like, she's cute, but she's probably gonna get destroyed. Especially when Awesome Kong came out, I'm like, Kylie's gonna be dead by the time. Didn't this have is a ever. chance, right? <laughs> yeah. So no, I'm actually, uh, I'm not super surprised. Like you know, I told you, I googled a little bit and saw what some of these wrestlers were doing. Britt Baker seems to be a contender for a while. You know, so I'm excited to see what else she does. I so I'd have to say no, I'm not surprised. Good. I'm excited. It's, it seemed like such a gimmicky character, Britt Baker, DMD, and she gets out and she's serious in the ring. I, what I, I mean, love, hard hitting. You know? uh, yeah, and she's strong, and she's just she, athletic. Yeah, was, she's just so athletic, and I just think that um, in a match where it it almost would have been too easy to have Nyla or Awesome Kong win, yeah, to have Britt Baker right. win, I think was super right. important. Yeah, no. So I like that. That would have been cheap, and they didn't go that route. That's that's good. Yeah, it's it's a really good point. Um, but then we're on to the third match of the main card, and it's and it's just a regular tag team match. We have the best friends, Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta versus Angelico and Jack Evans. Yep. And have you seen any of these four guys before? No, I have not. First time, yeah. right? And okay, so I'm going to get on a soapbox for just a half okay, sec. Okay, cool. And, and I apologize. I'm going to try to not be this way most of the time. But um, 
in the on on set of this matchup, JR, Excalibur, Alex, they make a really big deal about how AEW has made a rule where when you tag your your tag team partner in the ring, they're going to have a 10 count to get out as opposed to your normal 5 count. And the idea behind that was that tag team moves would have more time to be done legally. And JR says as long as it's legitimate and they're and they're enforcing it, great. Love the rule. Here's my thing. It was bullshit. <laughs> it just was because they I they you know, they're going to tell you that they have a 10 second time limit to get out of the ring, but the first tag in this match the the uh Trent Breda check tags in Chuck Taylor and Chuck's in the ring for 30 seconds or, or Trent's in the ring for 30 seconds before he has to get out of the ring. And it's not a thing, you know, like I understand that it's fun and it's exciting and uh, you know, people like that there's tag team moves happening all over the place and the rules don't really apply, but don't tell me that there's going to be rules and then ignore them. Yeah. Which is what this happened. seems like one of those, uh, yeah, we're improving this over, you know, WWE or something, but then you don't even follow it. But then you don't rule. follow it. And so, you, it's, you know, like later in the, in the night with Young Bucks and Lucha Brothers, they almost never have just one, one two guys oh, yeah, no, going most at it. Of the match. It's right. It's 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 two one two almost the entire time. So just don't tell me that you're gonna have a rule and then not follow it. <laughs> How do they hurt you like that? I'm just saying it yeah. just bothered me just a touch. Just a bit. It's maybe more than I'm letting on. But yeah. <laughs> judging by you clutching your chest and emotional distress. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah. I'm not mad about it. Uh, <laughs> but that does not take away from from what was a pretty decent tag team yeah. match, I thought. What what do you think from this one? I didn't actually take that many notes on this one. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I kind of overlooked this one. Um, it it kind of fades, yes. you know, when yeah. you, in a car well, full uh, of other matches. coming d- directly after um, the the match we just saw with right. Tyler Rose, Awesome Kong, everyone. I was still kind of riding that wave, I'm not going to lie. And then I wanted that again. So yeah. maybe that's like that's 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 new fan fallacy, you know, mistake, but. But I, again, there's not. I, I do remember there's nothing on this card that was disappointing. Yeah, and this I one, mean, this I match. this one just felt, I guess, maybe a little generic. And mm-hmm. I and I think for me, the reason why I don't remember it so fondly as maybe a lot of other things on the card is I think it stays past its welcome a little bit. It's a little over what, twelve minutes. I was about to say you read the time. Yeah, yeah. It's and a then lo- the names. I guess I didn't remember any names. I didn't recognize any, and I didn't remember them afterwards. You know, right? Uh, it turns into sort of a, a s- <laughs> somebody's gonna rip me a new one. That's fine. Or They'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, uh, no. I don't like this anymore. <laughs> there's some there's some neat moments. There's some nice tag team moves. Um, it, it it kind of gets the second half of the match. It's like, man, this thing is they they won't win. Like nobody's winning, and I don't know yeah. why. Like they've hit <laughs> they've hit crucifix bombs and 450 splashes, and you know it's sort of that tag team wrestling. And I understand that AEW. Uh, one of the big things that they said was they were going to make tag team wrestling important again, and that's oh, huge. Yeah, I do remember them saying that. Yeah, and I'm totally for it. Um, but this this match in particular just felt like it overstayed its welcome a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but the best friends get the win over Angelico and Jack Evans. Yeah. Which feels like the right That's move. one thing I did remember, the best friends. That's a cute nickname for it. It is. Uh, but I will tell you what happens uh, that is memorable because of this match is what happens after. Yeah. So Chuck and Trent tried to do a, a group hug with Angelico and Jack Evans, and then the lights go out. Do you remember this? Tell me what happens. The, I think I might. Yeah, so the lights go out during, like, when they're about to hug, and it and the lights come up, and there's two random guys in the ring. Everybody gets jumped. And everybody gets yes. jumped, right? And so Did old, we find out who it was? They don't ever tell okay. you in that moment, but I looked it up. <laughs> and oh, uh, okay. Evil Uno and uh, Stu Grayson, who are both going to be in the Dark Order later down the line in Dynamite uh, and in the the AEW. Dark the Dark Order. Ooh. Yeah, so excited to cover that. Uh, but they, you know, they kind of handle the all four of those guys because they have help from all these minions along yeah. the side and so bunch of jobbers yeah. i know that word <laughs> right there you go it was kind of neat though you know kind of kind of made if, if that was the whole point of the match that, was to that get did to that make more of a splash for me than anything else in the match yeah so. totally agree um but we're already on to the fourth match of the night and we're back to the women's division yes and again i i didn't take notes of every single one that came out i did take some um emmy sakura I didn't say in the beginning, um, I think when SCU came out, Christopher Daniels had a microphone on a stand. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. Do you know who that looks like? That reminds me of Freddie Mercury, because Freddie Mercury ran around a lot with it. He didn't yes. have the bottom of the stand, but he had the stick and the mic. Yumi Sakura came out. She was straight up, had the mustache Same thing. How was fun like, was that? I, I automatically love you for that. She And then at one point in the match, she does, we will rock you. Yeah. Uh, oh, a yeah, crowd yeah. chant. Yeah. 
I was obsessed. It was yeah, really fun. Okay, it's your gimmick that you're Freddie Mercury. Yeah. I'm I'm here for it. Which actually, this um this might have happened before, but are they? They're not just AEW, right? No, no, and and I think and I don't know maybe how which ones stay and which ones go after this. Um, but they are uh, the, all six of these women were from Japan. They're part of of the Joshi wrestling scene, mm-hmm. um, which is something that we've covered a little bit on our main pod, uh, and that we uh, desperately want to do more of, and we will. Um, but it it lends itself to six. Fascinating characters. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and um, I I I feel like I'm gonna pronounce some of these like not on on point, but uh, Hikaru Shida. I yeah. wanted to say that uh, her, as far as just if you go strictly by outfits and the way they look, I loved her outfit. I think she was one of the bigger contenders in the match too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Yuka Sakazaki. I think mm-hmm. she was, uh, if I remember right, she was the very cutesy like. Yeah, I think yeah, they yeah. called her the <laughs> magical girl. Yes, yeah. I yeah. loved her. I couldn't get enough yeah. of her. She was great, and they and she tagged. She was with uh, Sakura. She was tagging with Aja Kong as well. Yeah, Aja Kong. Big that's deal. another one. Big deal. And um, she, what was it? Um, well, she she trained one of them. Who was on the opposite team, right? Yeah, yeah. So Aja Kong um, is is a huge influence for all Joshi wrestlers, but also just women's wrestling in general. Uh, but Emi uh, Sakura trained uh, Hikaru Shida. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That was uh, yeah. Which was really, really neat. Student type exactly. Thing. Yeah. Which is just a fun story to play out. Uh, Shida actually tag teamed with Riho and uh, Ryo Mizunami. Um, it, it was just it's a match. It goes about thirteen minutes, and the women just go and yeah, they're and I, it's I thought fun. it was pretty brutal. I did want to say, um, Aja Kong, she she like comes from. Can I call it gorilla position? You know yeah. what I mean behind the yeah. screen or whatever with a trash can. I think. Yeah, it's like this little she metal. She like, walks out with it. Yeah. I don't know. I was like, what's going on with this? And then later, obviously, she beats somebody upside the head with it. Right, but, but it, yeah, I thought that was they. I a few was, like, of them bring stuff, or, right? Yeah. Like I think Sheeta brings a, a or one of one of the people on Sheeta's teams brings a, a kendo stick. Yeah, and uh, obviously Sakura brings her mic stand. Did she use that? To, I don't think, think she okay, used it, but exactly. but she had it right. So it was kind of interesting that they had little yeah. mm-hmm. weapons with them. Um, the only thing that that holds this match up for me was the ending was a little botched. Do you remember this? Uh, maybe. <clears throat> so, so the ref yeah. was uh, was uh. I feel terrible. No, 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 no. It's totally fine. There's a lot to take in. Uh, the ref was Aubrey Edwards. Who's? Oh wait, wait. Is this where the match like supposedly end and they rang yes. the bell and he was like, no, or was it? A, it was a female. Yeah, Aubrey, Aubrey Edwards. Edwards. She's great. Yeah. She was like in. She was in multiple matches. Wasn't yeah. She? Yeah. The bell rings and she looks over and she's like, no, st- the match is still going. Like ignore she the bell. She handles it great. Yeah, she handles that's it what great. I thought too. I, I was like, no, like they probably look at each other like, uh, you know what's happening, <laughs> right. but no, they kept going. I, I think they recovered pretty well. I, I do, it too. It almost felt like it was supposed to happen that way, although I think it might have been a mistake, but I think, they, like you said, they did a good job playing it off. Totally agree. Uh, but it ultimately ends where Shida, the student, does get the pinfall over Sakura, yeah. her her teacher. What a great, yeah, what a great story. Yeah, really love that. People I've never heard of, there was a story from beginning to end. I liked it. It was it was really great. Yeah, I'm I, in two women's matches. Love it. That's what I need to do. I need to watch women's wrestling. Yeah, and there's plenty of good stuff out there. So, um, But... It's now time for, it's not the main event, but perhaps the match that most people will remember from Double or Nothing, and that is Cody versus Dustin. Yes. Cody, obviously. Um, I took a note. Oh, wait, well. No, no, you, no, you go, no, go ahead. One name that I've heard a lot, Earl Hebner. Yes. He's a big deal, too. He is a big deal. He's yeah. been, he's been a referee sure he for 135 ref years. When Dustin Rhodes was. Um, Absolutely. He used to have a different name. What was it? Gold Dust. Gold Dust. He probably, or before that, even, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because before he was Gold Dust, he was just the natural Dustin yeah. Rhodes, right? Yeah, I, I want to, before we um, get into it, I want to say this match. Um, I feel terrible. I didn't take as many notes, but from start to finish, I was blown away by this. Like I said, the story they told, uh, the whole. Um, they have a huge. What's the age difference? Like seventeen years or something. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's almost like a full generation between them, and then it's Attitude Era versus I don't know what he the new generation or mm-hmm. whatever he calls himself. Um, so many, and then of course the whole uh, oh who somebody one of them wore a uh, Dusty's favorite son. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not in the match where they mentioned it. I was like, damn. There was a lot of emotion going into this match from start to finish, but uh, you go ahead. Well, it's it. it's just one of those things that um, it's a story that writes itself. Yes, yeah. Brother That's versus. That's what I'm trying to say. You said it so much. Brother versus brother, generation versus generation, 
and a match that when they were both in the WWE, it's a match that everyone really, really wanted and we never really got. I didn't know that. Yeah. I actually uh, didn't know that Cody has been wrestling for a long time. Yeah, yeah. He's been, yeah, and he was. Because um, I've never heard of him before. He this. was a tag team champion, an intercontinental champion in WWE, and, and kind of when Cody left, it was after they sort of changed him into Stardust, which was. Uh, you know, sort of a playoff of Gold Dust, his brother, and um, and that's and that's a big reason why Cody left is because he was unhappy with what was happening because he wasn't being taken seriously as a Stardust. Yeah, character. he wasn't Cody Rhodes. He, he was w- he was Gold Dust's brother. Right, uh, and uh, they have. What does a, that sound like? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. So Cody and Dustin, uh, you know, they actually had a run as tag champs together in the WWE. Um, there was a really great moment. I think it was maybe at, at Battleground uh, where they win the tag team titles with Dusty Rhodes still there. This is before Dusty passed away. Um, so now to fast forward to 2019 to have Cody versus Dustin, sort of the match that everyone wanted then, you know, a few years before. Um, it's just a super big deal. Yeah, one of them actually said something about, like, what do you think Dusty would think if he could see this? And he's like, there's no way he'd want to see his two sons yeah. beat the crap out yeah, of Yeah, JR other said he would be unsettled. He would be unsettled. Yeah, see, yeah. Uh, which is, which, which, I mean, goosebumps. Considering the amount of blood. Oh, well, <laughs> I, let's talk about it. So, I was like, let this end. So Cody comes out, and he and he hits the, the, the obvious Triple H throne with the sledgehammer, oh. you know, obviously very, very bold and brazen, and it was very obvious uh, play to Triple H, um, which is neat and fun. Everybody loved it. Um, Dustin comes out, and it almost, when, when Dustin comes out, it almost sounds like his Gold Dust theme until it hits a heavier note, and then it starts being a heavier theme, which I thought was really, really yeah. cool. Um, I'll probably do that. Yeah, and so they end up calling it the natural versus the the throne breaker, uh, which is really fun. Um, Brandy Rhodes is out there, and let me just tell you something. And you kind of talked about this earlier, how Cody and Brandy sort of remind you, sort of that Triple H, Stephanie McMahon couple, like power couple. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure there are two more attractive people I than Cody say, we and didn't Brandy. It. Brandy is beautiful. They're just pretty. Yeah, they're beautiful yeah. people, and then Cody as well. Yeah, and yeah, and I mean, they're God damn everybody's hot here. Yeah, they're talented as 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 anything in the <laughs> world. Get, why but, was I really watching this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, in the early going of this match, Cody and Dustin sort of go back and forth um, to, like, you know, kind of counter each other's move. Dustin actually does a, a senton flip off the apron onto S- Cody the on the outside. Is that the front flip? Yeah. Yeah, it's the yeah. Front f- Those look so crazy and brutal and hard yeah. to pull off. And, uh, it and feels Dustin's like they took at the exact right second exactly. that they don't die. And Dustin's 50 years old, yeah. right? And he's never done that, it doesn't seem like. So really, really neat that he adds that to his arsenal. Um, but something Cody does in the ongoing is he's like, oh man, I'm getting beat, I need to take a break. So he, Oh yeah, he gets out the ring. Yeah, he I gets remember out that. Of the, yeah, he gets out of the ring, walks into the crowd um, and drinks some water and gives the bottle of water to Brandy. Then he gets back inside the ring, distracts the referee. Brandy uses and this the lasts water. This a long time. Yeah, just walking around and Dustin. He doesn't chase him down at all. He just stands there and watches him. Exactly. And so it's he's re- probably like, "This is going a lot worse than I thought it was going to." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, I thought this guy was old. It's a really nice Cody heel move, right? Playing yeah. over the bottle of water and Brandy obviously being there. Um, You're right. Hold this, woman. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then wow. and then and then the match changes. When Dustin is set up for the broken dream, so he's got uh, or the shattered dreams. I'm sorry, he's got uh, Cody with his legs across the second turnbuckle for for the shattered dreams, where normally Dustin would run up and and kick uh, his opponent between the legs right there in the turnbuckle. Um, but Cody takes off the turnbuckle pad and Ooh, uh, and yes. Dustin it runs into that second turnbuckle. Is that the moment? It it, it partially, okay. but what they don't notice. Uh, the announcers don't mention it at all because they're in a replay of that happening. When they're in that replay, Brandy hits Dustin over the head with something else. And I, I don't know what it was, but I saw... Wait, is this where she does that and Cody's like, I can't tell if he's trying to decide... It, I, I couldn't tell if he was saying no or yes. It looked like he was like, no, you're not supposed to interfere. Stop, right? That's what I picked up Yeah, as. that's yeah, kind of yeah. what it looked like. But Dustin ends up getting out of the ring, and Brandy spears him. That's Okay, yes, yeah. Plants that's, him that's with the spear. That's what I'm thinking of, and Cody's like, what the hell are you doing? Yes, and that's when Earl Hebner tosses Brandy out of there, and on her on Brandy's like trying that's not right. to leave. That's right, he's like looking up at her like, rah, rah, rah. did you notice who came and picked Brandy up to bring her backstage? Um, it was a big deal. Big deal, uh, DDP. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Diamond yeah. Dallas. I recognize Page. that name too. Yeah, yeah. He's, doesn't he have a move named after him? Uh, the Diamond Cutter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So really, really cool to see him just briefly. Um, but what you'll notice is while Brandy is is talking to Earl Hebner, Dustin's underneath the ring. 
And, I mean, spoiler alert, this is when he was blading, right? Yeah. I don't know what went wrong here, but man, oh, man. You cut a little deep, bro. A little deep, because the second half of this match. <laughs> you can't tell what side had paint on it and what side is blood. It's one of the bloodiest matches I've ever seen. Yes, it's terrible. What did you think? What did you think? I just remember watching, and I'm like, please let this end. This poor man is going to die. And actually, I wanted to say um, one thing I do remember from very very early on last match standing uh, history. We covered Steve Austin versus Bret Hart, and yeah. I think he had him in the sharpshooter. Is that what it was? And that's this the is famous s- photo. Such a perfect reference and for you to make was, right now. Thank you, yeah. And uh, he basically did that. But yeah. there was like ten times more blood, you know? Yes. I mean... Th- they had to do that on purpose. I, w- yeah, I mean, obviously, the the blood... Uh, the, 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 I mean, not the blood, but the, the, the photo op like that. Yeah, it was a that's per- such an iconic perfect shot. Perfect callback. Yeah. And um, especially because Bret Hart comes out yeah. right after this, right? Um, but it, Dustin bleeds all over the place. The mat is drenched. <sighs> I mean, it, it's, I'm convinced it's they got literally a mat. Right. It's literally pouring out of his head the whole time. Dude, there's one point where you see him. He's his head's a little above the ground, and you just see it. It's a steady, it's not like drips. It's like pouring out of his head. It was kind of scary. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I thought it was, I thought something was going to happen to him. Like, he wasn't going to get up. And, yeah. like, you know, what's it, what's, ah, damn it. what's it called when there's a word for when uh, the reality, quote unquote, of wrestling? Kayfabe? Yeah. Right? Kayfabe is real. Well, or, K- Kayfabe oh, oh, is the, is the story. Okay, yeah, 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 wrestling real. Like, I thought he was going to, like, die non-Kayfabe. Right. There we right. Go. That's what I'm trying I, to but say. But yeah, that's yeah. how deep that cut was. Yeah. He just would not stop bleeding. Um, and they but, were saying it, too. They're like, please. Yeah. <laughs> to, to their credit, and, and, you know, Cody and Dustin, they wrestle another 15 minutes after that happens. Yeah, I did write, um, there's a move that, um, I believe it's Cody, the Crossroads. Yes. So cool, because obviously the last name. Yep. Um, but that's a brutal looking move. I actually went on, uh, maybe not brutal, but it's one of the cool moves. I went and watched YouTube. That's where I learned that he'd been wrestling for a while. If you yeah. look up Crossroads, there's ones of him doing it way back, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, is the Crossroads, like, you know, a lot of these finishers are very, are, um, modified versions of moves that already exist. Yeah. Do you know what the Crossroads is? I, it's, it's really a neck breaker, I think, more than yeah, anything else. Yeah, that's what else. I was going to say, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, look at oh, you. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's just, it's it's fast. And yeah. it's and it's a fun move. And actually, Dustin and Cody trade them off. I think so. Dustin think hits did. one, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but well, ultimately... Ob- uh, really, it's the family name. The, it it's is. almost like they both got the they power have to, to have do it. it. Isn't yeah, that great? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but Cody hits a second Crossroads on Dustin to pick up the win. But Dustin... Do you remember what happens after the match? I cried. Uh, Are you referring to the speech? I am. I, the only part that I wrote down, I'm not going to say it just yet. Um, the match ends, and if I remember right, um, I, I think Dustin was still on the ground. Yeah. And uh, Cody's walking around, and he, he grabs the mic, and he moves towards Dustin, and Dustin like backs up, like afraid, like he's like, right. oh, it's over. And, um, oh, it's such a tender moment, God damn it. <laughs> and uh, he talks about... Um, he said before AEW was ever a thing, um, they were setting up some, or they, they were setting up some kind of match. You might know the details more than I was, but there's a match that was going to be in the future, where he had a, um, he was going to have a partner of his own choosing, and he's like, "What did he say? It's like I don't need a partner, I don't need a friend, I, I need a brother." And when he said that, I was like, oh. <laughs> Tears everywhere. The crowd. Yeah. I mean, you could see people in the crowd crying. The you know Excalibur <laughs> was crying. Doing... Oh, I didn't even notice Excalibur. Yeah, was crying. it was because when they show him later, he's like digging in his mask to like yeah. wipe. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, it was ch- uh, chills. That's one of those chills. Unforgettable moments. So let me ask you this: Does this match, Cody versus Dustin from Double or Nothing 2019, <laughs> is this a match that we should consider for the main feed? For last match standing, one of the 100 greatest wrestling matches of all time. Okay, so just based on the story and the emotional impact and the lasting impact, yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the the technical aspect. You, um, Landon and Paul, would have more to say about that. Yeah. But this is something unforgettable. And I've seen matches that were supposed to be kind of emotional ones. Like Landon has tried to show me a few. I do remember the o- the only thing that ever came close to how this made me feel was Shawn Michaels and. Uh, was it Ric Flair? 
The, I, yeah. I'm sorry, I love you. WrestleMania 24, kick. yeah. That was the only thing that I could ever think of that was even close to being this emotional. And um, I don't think we covered that one. No, not, no. And I, I, I don't know if we will. Yeah. We, um, we have enough but Shawn we might. Michaels matches. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm joking. I, no, I think you're absolutely right. So, so to our patrons listening, what do you think? If you would like it to be on there. Yeah, what do you think? Cody and Dustin, should that be considered one of the 100 greatest matches of all time? It's 100. you got to sneak it in there somewhere. Yeah, I don't, we might have to. <laughs> we might have to. Um, but we go from Cody and Dustin, super, super emotional, into uh, the presentation of the AEW World and Championship oh belt. Oh, my God. That, 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 honestly, that's one of my favorite segments from start to finish. Um I don't remember how they. Oh no! He, oh, how does he introduce them? The best there was. The best there is. And the best the, there ever will be. Yeah. And then I think when people hear that, they know. And he comes oh, out. Oh yeah. And I got goosebumps. I was like, they didn't announce that. that no. He was, no. And then so when he walked out, people probably lost their minds. Freaking out that Bret Hart's there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Oh my God. Um. And then on top of that, it's a beautiful title. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's gorgeous. Yeah. That gold. It's huge. It's massive. It's really, really nice. Um, for me, the segment goes a little long yeah. because MJF comes out. I and was to, oh, I was going to say, I, I, okay, I like MJF because he comes out and he's kind of, you know, it's the way he's talking and everything. He's fun. And then I said, okay, fuck you. Because right. um, <laughs> he, he specifically takes a, I think, um, is Adam Page with him in the ring? Yeah. Yeah. And then he takes a dig at Bret Hart. What does he say? He's like, right, listen up, old man or something yep. like that. And I was like, bruh. <laughs> yeah, and every you know, and everybody's so protective. Show some respect. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it just for me, and you know, Jimmy Havoc comes out and Jungle Boy and um, Oh yes, it that's just, right. It just was a lot. See, and it just and kinda went on I and on. But I liked it. it was almost like in my head, maybe I took this wrong, but it's almost like they were just like, How dare you talk to Bret Hart like that? Yeah. You know? No, I, mean, I think that's what they were did, going for. Didn't they go into the crowd at one point too? Yeah. He was <laughs> that, I wrote that down because that was pretty memorable. That was pretty great. Uh, it was funny watching MJF get choked by his own scarf. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's something kind of fun about that. Yeah. Um, but Brett shows off the belt. It's beautiful. Everybody's happy. Uh, and then we've got two matches to go. Yep. Um, this very next match, uh, match six on the card, is the only uh, title match of the night. And it is for the Triple R World Tag Team Triple Championships. R. Yeah, because wow. they're from Mexico. Yep. Uh, and it's the Young Bucks versus the Lucha Bros. Okay. And it's great, but I have a quick question. Are they letting other promotions wrestle on their show? Uh, so they did here. That's what I was asking about the um, the one with Sakura and Shida. They were from a different promotion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think part of that is, um, you know, it's sometimes like cross promotional wrestling. Or yeah, something. yeah. Sometimes wrestlers will will uh, will sign contracts that allow them to move in between. Which and I think since a lot of AW does right, right. Yeah. And since AW, especially since they're newer, um, is something that they they're kind of they use a lot of. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's really neat to when that happens because we get matches like this. Yeah, and I, I did a little research on the Young Bucks. I saw, um, well, actually, I didn't have to do much research because they mentioned it. They um, the Young Bucks weren't in Triple A, ah, Triple A, right? Um, but they went in and they stole the title basically from these guys, yeah. which is cool. Um, I when that happened, was AW a thing? I no, not not at that yeah, point, yeah. not at that yeah. point. But they were building towards it. So yeah, that honestly, I think it's a really cool idea too. You know, maybe if Triple A was a promotion that hadn't gotten as much attention, yeah. You know, and this obviously was a really big deal. AEW should be pay per view. I, I like that. It's almost like a knot or like a helping hand to the smaller guys you know what i mean yeah i love that no you're absolutely right and it's always such a it's it's such a huge deal when it and feels like those lines are blurred too yeah from start to finish it's 25 minutes just about i, I feel like i was holding my breath the whole time yeah, yeah so what do you think about the young buck I, is this is this your first young buck match that you've watched no because we you you watched uh the world's cutest tag team when yeah, we oh, did that right. on the main field yeah that, yeah wow i forgot that was the young bucks yep um is that the one with the gummy bears that is the one the, with the gummy bears yeah. absolutely also it was the one candace LeRae. yes it was a woman wrestling with them. yeah yep. i thought that really stood out too yeah i forgot that was the young bucks so no this is uh this is my first one on an actual tv stage not in like a gym somewhere right. but <laughs> but um young bucks lucha brothers i'll tell you what i fell in love with the Lucha Brothers, yeah. specifically Ray Phoenix. I just thought he was incredible. Um, and this is one of those where I almost don't care who wins because both teams are so good. Oh, yeah, no, from start to finish. it's um, It made me fall in love with both of them. Like, I want to go sit down and watch more wrestling matches from both of them. Um, I'd heard so much about the Young Bucks. People right. told me, oh, they're the best or one of the best um, tag teams ever. But that's, don't discount Lucha Bros because those guys, I think, they might be a little more fun to watch, actually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think I'm, yeah. I'm ready to agree with you there. Yeah. Um, and we could go through. I, we almost it would take another hour for us to break down every single spot 
mm-hmm. so to speak, in this match. Uh, but the but I think one of the moments that stood out to me uh, is Penta does a um, a, can, a Canadian destroyer on the apron. Um, to that's that's the one where um, it looks like they're set up for a power bomb, but they flip and do a pile driver sort of. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. And so he does that, oh. and then Felix the does one the, in the ring right after. The apron is the hardest part of the ring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, Michael, it is the hardest part of the ring. <laughs> um, and so it, you know, the the destroyer is absolutely a safe move, but it looks absolutely devastating. Yeah. And so it just doing it on the apron, I thought was really really cool. Um, I wrote um, Phoenix has both of the young bucks on the ropes, and then he does a hurricanrana. Oh, Do you know what I'm talking about? Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got he's got, and I don't I don't remember if it was Nick or Matt. One of them I is 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 apart. sitting on the top rope. Um, oh yeah, and they're trying. Aren't they trying to set him up for something? Yes. And then one comes up from behind, and he fights him. Oh my! It God. was just. Uh, this is it, the most high flying athletic crap I've ever seen. Right, and I'm just saying they never had the ten count for the tags. I just, I'm, I'm not gonna say anything else about it. I just wanted to say that. Um, you know how Paul does the whole power bomb streak. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna have a streak for how many times they break the ten second rule. <laughs> if well, and nobody it's, bats an eye. It's gonna be every time. <laughs> it's gonna be every time. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is wrestling. Yeah. Everybody follows the rules. Right, right. Um, but uh, man, just an incredible, incredible match where ultimately the Young Bucks do get their finisher, the Meltzer Driver, and they beat the Lucha Bros to retain the, the Meltzer belts. again. Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, what happens now to the title? You know, I don't does know. It still exist within AAA? Uh, I think it does. Can, uh, can you hold titles in two different promotions? Yes, it's the short answer, and I think the reason why, um, you know, when we saw the the Joshi match earlier, you know, two or three of the women in the six women tag match came out with different belts, but based off of the oh, promotions true. they yeah, came yeah. from. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Um, I I do think you can. Um, typically, you, you if you are going to spend more time in one promotion, you'll relinquish the belt in the other promotion. So I'm not sure uh, if we see much more of the Triple R World Tag Team Titles in AEW. Um, I imagine we might see another defense, but they what might end up happening is they go drop it in that promotion, and then we just don't see them back in AEW. But yeah. I, but as far as I know, the Young Bucks and the Lucha Bros both stay in AEW, which is great news. Right. Which is great, yeah. great news. Um, you know what it's time for? Is this the main event? It is the main event. Um, Kenny Omega. Yes. And Chris Jericho. Yes. Um, I probably looked up more stuff. I, I'd obviously heard of Kenny Omega. We actually, um, Omega versus Okada was the first match from season, was that two? Yes. Yeah, season two. Um, I didn't look up too much about him then. After watching this, oh my god, um, his um, maybe I'm jumping ahead a little, but his move, um, the one winged angel, the one winged that angel, that is incredible. It's beautiful. And uh, like I looked up a shirt of him. There's actually one where like it's like a silhouette of him in the background doing the one winged angel. It's just a great move. Um, and his whole gimmick that he's like, what is he? Uh, he's like a huge video game fan. Yeah. Obviously, that resonates with me. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and you know what I love? It's good. This match is built as. Alpha versus Omega. Yeah. Right. And they had done it previously in New Japan before this. And so this is the rematch of Where does that Alpha match. come from? Um, does Chris Jericho just, call himself? He, he just calls him, He's calling himself the Alpha, okay, right? Okay. And, and it was more specifically for this feud. Mm-hmm. So it could be Alpha versus yeah, Omega. Okay. Wow. But with Jericho being. You just made the list, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but with Jericho being one of the greatest of all time, I don't think that's arguable. Yeah. Um, Oh, you know, let me he, say, I did know Chris Jericho, obviously. Yeah. I've been trying to keep track of letting you guys know who I knew. Uh, Chris Jericho, how could you not? Yeah, he, he's a he's a legend. And um, it's it's Alpha versus Omega, Jericho versus um, Kenny Omega. And the winner will go on to face Hangman Adam Page for the first ever AEW World Championship. Yeah. So um, what, I, what I thought was really neat is Jericho's entrance. Right, because uh, it sort of pops up with different iterations of Jericho through the years. You yeah. know, they've got the light-up jacket, they've got the list, like you just mentioned, and they've got the Lionheart version of Jericho. Oh, yes, I do remember seeing that. Yeah, yeah and then Lionheart. ultimately the lights go out, and Jericho comes up, and he's it's Fozzie, his band, singing the, his theme song, yeah. Judas, right? One of the greatest rock bands of all time? Fozzie? Maybe. Is it? No. Nah, probably. Okay. <laughs> but, um, but neat. I, I love when people sing their own themes, so yeah. I was I was totally here for it. And Basic thug and not remix. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. If you'd like to hear like it's misleading, say I don't know any wrestling. I had friends that loved it, and I basically like watched one match, just enough to know about um, John Cena's breakthrough rap album. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> Maybe that's something that we do down the line. <laughs> is uh, Dustin Last. Dustin recreates. 
<laughs> you can't see me, John Cena's <laughs> rap album. Let me know if you want to see it because I know I do. That's, they that's, can't see that. Nah. <laughs> Please. Oh, <man. laughs> Please no. Uh, <laughs> but you know what's kind of funny in the beginning of this is uh, Cracker Barrel is a ver- officially yeah. a, a sponsor. Okay. So- <laughs> And they're not, they don't even mention it. Like, no. one, before the match starts, the ref's like, oh shit. There's just and a barrel in the ring. He's trying to get it out. And Chris is like, move. And he just like <laughs> chunks it out the ring. <laughs> what was the point of that? I think, I don't know. I, Cracker Barrel was obviously a sponsor. They never say anything about it, though. It's just, <laughs> they just put, they the just put a barrel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. Uh, okay. But after Jericho yeah. gets frustrated <laughs> with the Cracker Barrel, um, this match is hard hitting from start to finish. It's actually the Cracker Barrel Barrel. It is the Cracker Barrel, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but this match is hard hitting from start to finish. They they start with trading slaps, and I don't think it, it gets any less hard after that. Yeah, um, they mentioned that he did a V trigger, which I think that's one of Kenny Omega's specialty moves. What is that? I it's didn't it's catch the what it's it the big knee. It's the oh, big like running knee strike. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And yeah. It, and it's one that uh, that when you watch Kenny Omega, he does it typically in big matches, probably four or five times a match, um, yeah. which is you know whatever. So it's his like Brock Lesnar suplex city. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Kind of. And v it's, trigger city. And it's quick and it's hard hitting and it's brutal every single yeah. time. No, it, I mean everybody loves a knee to the head. Yeah. What's what's not to love? <laughs> right. Uh, but Jericho, a lot of this match happens similar to their first matchup. A lot of it happens on the outside. Yeah. Um, Jericho gets dropped onto the the um, timekeeper's podium. Yeah. Uh, by Omega. Uh, Omega gets tossed over the barricade. Jericho holds onto the camera, and meanwhile, yeah. oh, you remember that? Yeah. Camera, and, yes. and Kenny yeah. spits water in his face. Yeah. Um. And then is, is that like Chris Jericho's thing? You know, getting the camera. It just felt. I don't know too much about him, but it felt on on par for him. Yeah, like, it's something yeah. that he does. He does regularly. Okay. Um, he, Jericho is just a character so that he likes humiliating people. Yes. Yeah. That's that's a good thing to pick up on. Absolutely. Um, at, at one point, Jericho goes out of the ring and he picks up. Uh, he gets a table. Yeah, um, and we forget about the table. And we for forget about the table. And initially, um, Omega is able to to do a baseball slide into the table into Jericho, and oh, he also yeah. does a double stomp onto the table onto Jericho onto the outside. And then we do forget about the table for a bit. Um, Omega gets um, Jericho in the ring. He hits him with a rolling leg lariat, followed by that first V trigger into the back of Jericho's head, who's yeah. against a turnbuckle. What's a leg lariat? It's just a lariat is when you like uh, it's you, a, don't, you don't you bounce off the ropes and then you basically clothesline someone, right? Yeah. So so a leg lariat is is a Use your leg. leg. Yeah. yeah it's that. it's kind of a, a a spinning kick. It's brutal. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Um, but then Jericho uh, does some some lion salts. To Omega, do you remember the line? So it's the it's the moon salt from the second rope that Jericho okay, does. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he does it back to back times because the first time he lands on the back of Omega's head, ouch. And then the second time he lands it like normal. Yeah. Um. But the match just really sort of stays back and forth the whole time. Um. What do What do you think of this twenty seven minute main event? Um. I think it was great. It definitely gave me something to view or something to um. Kind of get me hooked on Kenny Omega because I didn't say, obviously, I knew he was one of the big deal guys. He's probably one of the ones that people are going to consider the greatest of all time yeah. or whatever. Um, it gave me a lot of things to look up to, like um, obviously the V-Trigger and the One-Winged Angel. Um, I think he tries to do the One-Winged Angel multiple times. Yeah. I don't know if he ever pulls it off. No. I, I can see him set it up, you know? <laughs> yep. Um, what's a code breaker? Code breaker is the move where Jericho, um, he jumps in the air and grabs the back of, of Omega's head. And drops it across his knees. Okay. Right. So at one point, uh, Jericho hits a code breaker from the top. So Kenny Omega is like diving onto Jericho, and Jericho catches him uh, in, yes, into into right. a code breaker. Yeah. Right. It's just one of his finishing moves. Yeah. And then um, somewhere there's a top rope suplex. Do you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Uh, Omega. Is that hit- onto the table? That no, so Omega does the back suplex off the top rope. Yeah. Uh, but then w- later, when Omega's trying to do the one winged angel, Jericho reverses it and he and and he uh, gets he basically gets that code breaker again. Omega then sets up for a tiger driver ninety ninety seven, which is just a power bomb, right? Yeah. And um, it's a little bit more than that, but for for our purposes, it's a power bomb. And Jericho reverses it. He tosses Omega. Uh, it's sort of a back body drop over the top rope, and that's when he goes the through table. that table okay. that we forgot and about. We're like, oh, there it is. Yeah, and he lands hard. What a great comeback story. That yeah. table, you know. That table. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, I do remember seeing like, oh my god, that looked bad. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that would have been better if he if he would have went through the Cracker Barrel. Yeah. That would have been the only thing. The Cracker Barrel Barrel. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, but the way this match ends is uh, Jericho reverses that one wing angel back to back times. He gets DDTs on Omega. He hits a code breaker, and then he pulls out the Judas effect, which is the first oh, time I've he's ever used it. Yeah. Right. It's the first it's, time. Yeah. It's that big elbow. Okay, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, and it happened so quickly. Like, the V-trigger, I was like, wait, what was the... Because normally when I see special moves, it's some big grab or throw. Yeah. But the V-trigger is a knee, and then the the Judas effect is the elbow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But that's and, a special move, so... And and it works, and it's yeah. fast, and it's the first time we've seen it, and Jericho yeah. picks... Elbows and knees. Yeah, that's, that's our favorite. It. Uh, it's hard hitting, so I, I'm for it. Uh, Chris Jericho beats Kenny Omega in the main event to earn an AEW World Championship match ding, ding, against... Ding. Hangman Adam Page, but the night did not end there. Yeah, actually, before we go on, I have one question. Yes. What did you think about the barricade spots? You know, I don't love them. <laughs> you know me. You know me. I'm not a big barricade person. Well, every once in a while, they stand out. Uh, every once in a while, these for me did not. Oh, okay. They're just regular spots. Whatever. I mean, I didn't. I didn't. Last think. barricade spot standing? Right. Anyone? <laughs> I opt Fans, out. Fans, let us know if you I hit. opt out <laughs> of that moment. Um, but. While Jericho is celebrating, he's trying to uh, trying to force a thank you from the fans, from AEW, from Kenny Omega for you know thank you for um, you know having Chris Jericho save AEW, right? That's kind of wow. the idea. Um, but he gets interrupted um, <laughs> after he says, "This is not a company for the fans. This is a company for me," <laughs> right? That <laughs> Jericho, the you know the heel, obviously. Um, but he's interrupted with John Moxley. You remember this I know who the John Moxley is. Yep, formerly known as Dean, Dean Ambrose, Ambrose in the WWE. He's yep. John Moxley. He comes out. The crowd is pumped. I yeah. can't believe it. Uh, he hits uh, uh, what was the Dirty Deeds, and I think it's now a, the, called the Paradigm Shift in AEW. What a he, cool name. Yeah, that basically the double underhook DDT. He hits it on um, Jericho. He hits it on the referee. <laughs> and then he chases Omega all around the place. They kind of battle back and forth, and the show ends with Moxley hitting uh, that double underhook DDT on top of the poker chips on top of the stage. Wow, yeah. How fun is that? It's awesome. Um, I would like to say this left a very strong impression on me, and I'm excited to go forward. I'm like tonight. I want to go watch uh, Fighter Fest and take notes, but it's too late. I'm too late. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you, Dustin. Uh, as we sort of wind down, double or nothing. What were your favorite moments? Um. Well, it's probably from the women's matches. Yeah, um, they they were good ones. They were really good. Yeah. No. Um. I'll name a few. Um. The when. Awesome Kong had everyone on the ropes. Love that. And she did the huge slam. That was one. That's one of the pop off moments. Yeah. Um, as much as it freaked me out when Luchasaurus threw Joey Janela over the ropes and that woman screamed, I had to oh watch it like five gosh. times. I was like, that just sounds like she's being murdered. Um, I did love meeting MJF. As much of a douche as he is, he's. I think he does it really well. I don't know what his experience is with, you know, how long he's been in the wrestling world, but I think he pulled it off super well. Um. I actually have been trying to watch a little bit ahead and um, on Dynamite, and he stays hilarious and great. Um, let's see. Justin Roberts with the blood on the tux. That was a Honestly, good line. Oh, that's one thing I want to say that I learned. Um, the commentary is so important. Yeah, so I think one of the things that we're going to do every episode here for the, our, our you know welcome to the elite AEW crawl is favorite moments and then what I learned. Yeah, and so what I what just is combine them? Yeah, which is good. What is it about commentary that you think is so important that you're learning here? So what's funny is you could watch a spot being done without commentary and you're like that kind of sucked. But then yeah. if you have like Excalibur, like oh, oh my god, he, you know slammed onto that table. You're, I'm like oh my god, I'm pumped up. You know, mm -hmm. I think um, they make it out to be more than what it is, you know, which is, it helps you what's, uh, suspend your disbelief or whatever, yeah. you know, it really, I, they're a huge integral, but I thought they were, I don't, honestly, I never knew what the point of a commentator was, but watching it and trying to analyze this. If, if you'll remember, um, we did an interview with the PW225 uh, World Heavyweight Champion, Corey Constantine. Yes. And when we did that, we talked a lot about Undertaker, Jeff Hardy, and their ladder match. And part of that was talking about JR and Jerry Lawler, whose commentary was really good for that match. And something that Corey Constantine ever said. Bad commentary? Yeah, not really. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that Corey Constantine said in that interview that really stuck with me is he said that um, the wrestlers provide the music. Mm. 
mm. and commentary provides the lyrics. Yes, I remember that actually. That was yeah. a great interview. It was a great interview and a really great quote. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so to your point, you know, you watch the music happening in the ring, and sometimes, sometimes you like the lyrics even more, depending. Yeah. On, and, it, and it just adds on to what the music is already bringing you. Right. Um, so commentary hugely important, and and they do a really good job all night long. Right. I will tell you that uh, I, I learned a lot about some, some new wrestlers that I had never seen before. That's actually what I was about to say. Um, I didn't know if that was a valid answer. Yeah, I think it is. I you know I think some standouts for me, Scorpio Sky, I thought was really, really good. Um, Britt Baker was really fun to watch. Uh, you know, Obviously, the, the six-woman tag was really fun. Aubrey Edwards is a great referee. Um, I really appreciate watching Brandy Rhodes. Oh, yeah. I wanted to ask, do they norm- They don't really ever have female refs, right? Is that a um, It's becoming more and more. You know, they have a couple in WWE now. Aubrey, I think it might be the main, you know, the head ref in AEW. Um, you know, refs were something that, w- that were always men, and now they're not, which is great. And oh, yeah, so, I think we're moving in a great direction. Yeah, we love inclusion. Um, I also really liked Ray Phoenix from the Lucha Brothers. Pentagon was also great, but Ray Phoenix, I think, stood out to me as well. Um, so I, I just learned a lot about some new wrestlers that I, I wasn't super familiar with because I purposely haven't been watching AEW for this reason. Yeah. Um, and so I'm grateful to have been introduced to them. Yeah. Same here. Uh, I'm, I'm ex- I am hoping to see a lot more from MJF, Adam Page. I want to see what they do with him. Seems like he's going to be the guy. Um, there are people here that seems like when I first saw them, I thought they might be throwaway characters like Luchasaurus. I'm like, that looks like that's like bringing Shaq into a battle royale. Like, oh, okay, that's uh, gotcha, it. Gotcha. Yeah. But no, it seems like I mean, he's actually going to be somebody to see something for. I hope none of these people are throwaway. I don't know which maybe jobbers or throwaway rather people who they just do to fill space. It seems like everybody got their time, you know, and they seem to. Oh, one thing I'd like to say about uh, AEW, I feel like they might give their wrestlers a little more creative freedom than what we've seen. Do you think that's true? Um, I think I think we'll kind of figure that out as we go. Yeah, uh, I think it's altogether possible. Um, and I th- and I think that's that's one of the reasons why you know it's it's the Young Bucks and Cody and Kenny why they wanted to create this company yeah. is to p- be give wrestlers a chance to have a, a say and and make them just generally more happy with what you yeah. know having. And that's what I hope to. You know, I don't mean to bash any other promotion. No, but it's fine. I got yeah. I got I got sucked up in the optimism of a brand new promotion, which is I, good. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. I mean hopefully that lasts right, and I think it will. I think people still really love AEW right now, and I think that's a really good thing. So hopefully, you know, a worst case, you know, what's the worst thing that happens is that we watch AEW and realize, man, this is great. Yeah. You know, and True. and and that's a good thing. So and I think that's part of the fun of doing this with you, Dustin. I'm super excited about yeah, it. Yeah, me too. Um, you can obviously reach out to us on uh, Twitter at last ma- at last match cast, and uh, you know, our patrons that are listening to this, just comment on the post. Uh, let us know what you think about Welcome to the Elite. Um, how do you feel about uh, ranking things? Should we rank things? Should we not? Um, should Cody and Dustin make it onto the main feed? And what would you do to improve Welcome to the Elite as we go down the line? Um, you know, we're super, super open to ideas. We're really excited about having Dustin and, and myself go through AEW every week. It's going to be really, really fun. Um and it's also just something that we want you guys to enjoy as well. So thank you so much for letting us hit our first goal on Patreon. That's a super big deal to us. Uh, Dustin, uh, Paul, Landon, myself are all super, super grateful for that. And we just want to keep creating content that you guys want to listen to and that you guys enjoy. Um, so if there's anything that that you would have added on to this Welcome to the Elite spinoff, let us know because we're here for it. For fans, by fans. There you go. Uh, so next time out, we'll have Fighter Fest. Yep. That'll be coming up next. Yeah, we'll do. I'm I'm excited about it too. We'll have John Moxley in an actual match, I yeah. think, which will be really fun. Uh, and there'll be some other really good stuff there too. So I can't wait to get to get to Fighter Fest. Uh, so until next time, I'm Spencer, and I'm Dustin, and this, this is, is welcome, welcome to, to the, the Elite. elite. <laughs>